Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for attending uh, today's my talk. Uh, I'm Jing Liu. I actually, in the past five years, I get a lot of help from our uh, Geospace Frontier member uh, colleagues here. This uh, they gave lots of insightful uh, suggestions and comments to my work. Also, uh, get help from Shen Rong, Mir uh, Shen Rong from High Stack Observatory, uh, Mir's uh, Yakov from Boston University, and. Uh, Yunyang Zhang Snava from John Hopkins. Here is an animation telling us about the sequence of extreme space weather from the sun to the earth. So this is a, we see the chrono mass ejection. So hot plasma was ejected from the sun. And this plasma carried mag magnetic field, so it, it reconnects with Earth's magnetic field on day sun and night sun reconnection. This process powers the auroral precipitation. The enhanced auroral precipitation and geoheating associated with the storm will perturb the ionosphere, thermosphere. We see the TEC here. That's the ionosphere, total electron content of TEC was greatly disturbed. We see that both the, actually this pattern was, compl uh, was very complex. It has uh, both uh, in positive and negative storm effects. To take a closer look at the solar, mag uh, solar wind magnetosphere in, uh, interaction, this figure, uh, this schematic figure uh, shows the uh, solar wind uh, magnetosphere interaction. It depicts the, the, the plasma uh, flow driven by the magnetic reflection. The number the nine here uh, shows the evolution of, um, uh, of field nine uh, proposed by, by the Dongji cycle. Uh, southward IMFBZ, that is under parallel with the Earth's, mm, mm, day side Earth's magnetic field. So, so it reconnects on the day side. After the day side reconnection, it dragged anti sunward uh, to the magnetic tail, it reconnects again. So this uh, whole downy cycle is completed by the um, uh, night side magnetic flux delivery to the day side. If we trace the footprints into the ionosphere, we see well-defined uh, two-cell structure. This shows the um, uh, solar wind magnetosphere in, in action. Magnetosphere and ionosphere are also coupled through the large-scale field -like currents or real precipitation and also convection. An um, ionosphere is not just act as a passive uh, pa passive receiver. It can also regulate the solar wind, mag uh, regulate the MIT system response to solar wind by its uh, state change. The magnetosphere imposed uh, convection that can drive this two cell, uh, this two cell convection pattern. The magnetosphere imposed electro fields that drives this two cell convection, two cell convection pattern. In the day side, here is is noon. This is a midnight, dawn, dusk. This is a differential TEC map uh, between the storm time and the quiet time. We see in the in the in the noon or afternoon sector, uh, positive storm TEC always are are occur very often in the throat region. This is called a storm enhanced density. Uh, it can propagate into the polar cap. Form, form the town valization. In the sub of this uh, region, we mostly see the sub polarization stream, which is a very, uh, very fast sunward flow. So this high latitude, in order to un uh, understand the high latitude phenomena, it requires full understanding from the solar wind magnetosphere interaction, magnetosphere ionosphere coupling, and ionosphere thermosphere coupling. So we need a tool to can describe the whole uh, solar terrestrial train. Luckily, we have um, this whole geospace model here. Our colleagues here uh, at the geospace frontier put a tremendous effort in de developing this. Like our colleagues, Wen Bing has uh, put a lot of er effort. This LTR model uh, integrates LFM, the, that is a, M MS, a global MHD model. 
uh, Tai GCM is an ionosphere thermosphere toppled model. RCM is a rise convection model. Uh, LRFM RCM are coupled through exchange, exchange the plasma information. The fin line currents from this uh, magnetosphere part was uh, input into mix. And the mix also takes the conductance from the Tai GCM to calculate the electronic, uh, electric uh, potential. The aurora precipitation part was also empirical determined by the uh, plasma density and the temperature. So we used the particle precipitation and the electronic potential to drive Tai GCM. And the conductance was feedback again to, to, the, to the mix, mix calculated electrical fields and, uh, and uh, ion flo uh, and the flo and plasma velocity to serve as a low boundary of this magnetosphere model. Mm, uh, we have this whole geospace model that has an advantage uh, over the previous generation standalone Tai GCM on the uh, in, in that it has some uh, dyna ion dynamics between the solar wind magnetosphere inter interaction and uh, also magnetosphere dynamics as well. So apart from the, this uh, very uh, state of the state of the art model, we also use, uh, need some data to validate or do, uh, do the model data comparison. The data I'm using here is the GPS DC that are provided by the magical database. It has a one by one degree spatial resolution and five minutes temporal resolution. Incoherent square, uh, scatter radar, mostly from Millstone Hill and the Pfizer at the poker, uh, at the poker flat. It, it can give us uh, the electron density and nine of sine ion velocity and the electron and ion temperature. The third is the super down potential. That's a electrostatic potential uh, derived from sp spheric harmonic, harmonic fitting to nine of sine ion velocity. The first one is the uh, ionosone. Ionosone is widespread all over the world. That can provide a quite reliable electron density profile up to uh, peak height. The next wave uh, is the ampere, ampere field line currents. Let's revisit these uh, figures again. Uh, in, uh, this figure we see the two, uh, two cell convection pattern that can drag the mid latitude or sub aurora. Uh, positive storm effects um, and drag the plasma into the polar cap region from this nice scale, um, nice scale uh, tunnel visualization. Uh, besides this nice scale, we see the region one and region two closed at the uh, in the dusk side where the electron where the conductance is quite low, so it's built it's, uh, it's built very strong polarward uh, electro fields that has generated this. Sub aurora polarization, uh, polar, polarization stream. This polarization stream is uh, generally less than five degree most of the time. So this um, this is the um, mesoscale structure. We also have uh, have because of the strong electro fields, it can excite some turbulence there. Is uh, such as a Fallibuma instability. That's a um, micro scale. So from large scale to to mesoscale and the micro scale. Uh, this uh, cross scale uh, coupling makes this high latitude very uh, complicated and a sophisticated area to explore. So we are deal, deal with these topics. The first one we are we are look at the microphysics that uh, and also look at is how is your space consequence. Uh, after dealing with the, the the microscope, we look at the large scale storm enhanced density and tunnel visualization. Since mm, these two are are uh, quite dependent on the uh, interplanetary magnetic field that, 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 that shows the BY dependence. That uh, depends on BY. So the third part will talk about the MBY effects on the uh, IT coupling. The Fallibuma instability mostly occur in the E region area. Below that, because there is lots of um, conditions, uh, so the, both the electron and the ions are unmagnetized. They flow with neutral wind. Above that, the, the um, they are both magnetized because the, their gyro frequency is stronger than the than the collision frequency, but uh, between the, uh, within these two domains, the electron is magnetized. However, the ions are not. So electron will move in the E cross B direction, but ions uh, will move with neutral wind. So this differential motion between 
electron ions will be exaggerated during, during very strong uh, electrophilic condition. If this uh, differential motion between electron and ion exceeding the ion acoustic speed, that may excite, that excite the volubilumin instability. This volubilumin instability has two effects. First, it generates the luminous conductivity and also luminous electron heating. Here is a, an example showing the, the luminous electron heating has been observed by incoherent scatter radar. So y-axis is the uh, E-region electron temperature. The uh, x, uh, x um, is the uh, ion drift. So we see there is almost a linear relationship between these two, implying some, uh, some physics is going on there. They ascribe this physics uh, to the volubilumin instability. However, this volubilumin instability were um, never evaluated or accessed in the whole geospace context. We, uh, we plan to uh, access uh, or evaluate its uh, effects in the whole geospace context. In order to do that, we do a little bit surgery to the uh, TIGCM original energy, uh, electron energy equation. The, this uh, energy equation has mostly three terms. The leftmost is the vertical heat conduction. This is the heating terms, and this is the cooling terms. In the, the first step, we add the two parts to the, he, uh, to the heating terms. That uh, include the regular electro omega heating and also a luminous electro uh, heating. Regular electro omega heating is universal, and the luminous electro heating only occurs when these two, two requirements are satisfied. The first one, the, the convection electro fields should be stronger than the threshold. The threshold is calculated by this complex equation. Its magnitude is about 30 mV per meter. Uh, another requirement is the, the altitude should be lower than ion magnetized boundary, with, uh, at which altitude ion neutral collision frequency equals to ion gyro frequency. Besides the heating term, we, uh, we also uh, do some correction to the cooling term. The reason of correct it because in the TIGCM we assume max weighting distribution. However, during very strong heating condition, it's, n it's not a uh, satisfying. So we have to do some correction given the non max weighting distribution based on this profile and this equation. Here is the result show the, the, the standalone TIGCM results. Uh, we, in, sep in September equinox, and uh, at a solar medium condition, the solar wind driving is pretty strong. It's MBZ equals minus, tw minus 20. So this is a regular omega electron heating and the uh, aluminous electron omega, omega heating and the uh, aurora energy dissipation in, in the TIGCM. These three have the same color scale. So we see that the aluminous electron heating in this part is comparable to the uh, original or default TIGCM aurora energy deposition. So it's not negligible in the model. Its altitude uh, distribution mainly in the, uh, between 100 to 130 kilometers. So uh, after incorporating this uh, heating and uh, cooling correction, we see the temperature change and the electron density change. This is the standalone TIGCM temperature, in, uh, electron temperature in the E region. And uh, this is with heating without heating effects and without, correct, without heating effects. That's a difference. Uh, the, we see the temperature enhancement range from like 500K, something like around here, to almost uh, 2000K. That's, a, um, that's pretty close to the observation that's a, uh, by the incoherent scatter radar. We see that we choose to pick uh, two hot spots. We see that this green one is a green line is a is a, is, a, is a default TIGCM run, and the red one is a, with the F, uh, volume instability effects. We see that the temperature increase from the default like less than 500 uh, K to more than 2000 K. Uh, enhanced electron temperature will reduce the chemical, react, re, re, chemical recombination in the E region. So we see the electron density enhancement there as well. The electron density, the peak enhancement is closing 60%. Yeah, uh, you, you motivated uh, this uh, the development of this instability um, by the fast flows that are found in the 
subaural polarization stream? It, am I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but was that, that's what motivated uh, the study of the effects of early <coughs> movement here? Uh, sorry, can you, can you say it again? Uh, well, you, you first showed us the subaural polarization stream. You said the electric fields are large there. Yeah. Then you expect Farley Booneman. Mm -hmm. um, and then you inserted it in Thai GCM to look at the effects. My question is I, I would have thought SAS was over on the pre midnight side, dominantly, mm -hmm. but yet you're seeing a very strong effect here through midnight and over into the post midnight. Sector. So, can you help us understand what? Okay, that's a good, a good, a good question. Actually, here is a from uh, in this here is a standalone Thai GCM run, so it does not have self physics there. It's just to use a Weimar empirical model to drive the the, the standalone Thai GCM. I see. Okay. That's yeah. Right. And now I understand. Yeah, it's a little bit misleading, but. Uh, okay. So the yeah, enhanced the uh, enhanced the electron density will mm, uh, leads to the uh, conductivity enhancement as well. We uh, this uh, has the same layout as previous uh, figure. The uh, only difference is we see this uh, Hall and the Patterson conductivity. That's uh, with he uh, with heating without heating. The difference the enhancement is uh, 60, uh, 60 to eighty percent, and uh, the Patterson is uh, twenty six to eighty eight percent. So whether this localized ionosphere phenomena will propagate to the whole IT the system, the uh, the answer is yes. We look at the the Mar Mariano neutral wind evolution at different UT. This the uh, only, only show the Mariano wind. We see the this is northward, this is southward. So both are equatorward. So this this is uh, with heating also with heating at different UT. This uh, UT is two, UT is three, UT four, five. This is uh, without a uh, without uh, heating. There are difference. We see the 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 whole circulation was accelerate because the the equator becomes much faster. So that means the heating can accelerate the Mariano neutral wind. So that means the localized ionosphere phenomena can also. Uh, Propagate through the whole IT system. How about how about its whole geospace consequence? The answer is that it alters the relationship between the uh, between the voltage and the currents. This is the cross polar cap potential. The green one line is the default uh, LTR run. The purple one line is the is uh, corrected with uh, with, with uh, Corrected by Van der Buhmann instability, we see the uh, depletion, uh, depletion in the cross polar cap potential. At the same time, we see the enhancement in the field line currents. So, this is a summary uh, for my first part. Uh, Aluminous electrolyte has been implemented in the whole geospace model. So, there is significant uh, enhancement in the electron density, electron temperature, and the conductivity in the E region, which can affect the uh, voltage and the current relationship. No. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'm a little bit maybe confused. You said that your your run is driven by Weimar. So how the potential drop going to change across the park? <laughs> how that affect? How that happen? Okay. Okay. Actually, yeah. Yeah. This I I combine two works together. The first one is a standalone Thai GCM run. The second one is a for LTR run. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I need more explanation there. Uh, I, I think for this one, it's, uh, it's, it's LR, but yeah, with, with the conduct, uh, conductance correction there. The second one is uh, storm enhanced density and uh, time velocity. The figure we, sh uh, we look at before, I, uh, I show it here, here again. This, uh, that's a differential GPS TC map. In the in the dayside stroke region, we normally see the very dramatic TC enhancement. Uh, there have been several mechanism proposed um, for its formation, including the polar world expansion of um, equatorial ionization anomaly. The 
we see that's uh, from Tony Malichim 2005 paper. During quiet time, the EI crest and locates at, at uh, about 18 degree. But during a very uh, strong condition, strong uh, penetration in uh, event, the EI crest can move to uh, about 30 magnetic magnitude. And also crest was greatly enhanced. They called it this uh, super fountain effect were responsible for LCD. Another is the, the SAPS transport. They uh, ascribe the, the, the LCD to the uh, very strong sunward flux carried by sex. The last one is the local enhanced uh, uh, eastward electrophiles, electrophiles that move the, uplift the whole ionosphere to a higher altitude where the recombination uh, is much slower. That, were, that positive, uh, produce positive storm effects there. We pick up the uh, storm that uh, occurred in 2013, that is uh, 2013 uh, St. Patrick's Day storm. The shaded area uh, denotes the occurrence of SED. This uh, storm is not that strong. The, the minimum SAMH index is m or equivalent to DST. That is minus 32 nano Tesla. Here is the result showed the GPS t uh, differential TC between the uh, storm and the quiet. This is LTR differential TC between storm and quiet. And uh, this is LTR low SAPS. In the LTR low SAPS, I artificially to remove the SAPS based on the orbit precipitation pattern. We see the, the LTR model can well capture the, can, overall it can capture the, the pattern of time realization. We see, even though it looks um, more, thin, more, uh, more thinner than the observation. We see uh, this time realization uh, decrease in intensity gradually and uh, all disappear in about uh, several hours. In the LTR low steps run, the time realization looks looks brighter compared to this one. That means steps will not uh, increase the intensity of LCD or time realization, but but uh, increase the intensity. So steps is not in that case steps is not the major process uh, producing this SED. If the SAPS mechanism doesn't work, what, the, what could it be? We did a term analysis for the ion continuum equation. That's, uh, this showed the uh, electron density change between the storm time and the quiet time. This showed the, the electron density change caused by the chemical, re, uh, chemical reaction. And this electron density change caused by neutral wind. Electron density change caused by the E cross B drift and the E cross B and the uh, electron density change by the ambipolar diffusion. In the top side of the ionosphere, that's uh, above the F2 peak. So the E cross B in the throat region is a dominant uh, process to producing this positive storm effects, which is offset by the, by the neutral wind and the ambipolar diffusion. However, in the bottom side, we see the, uh, almost the opposite condition, uh, opposite uh, situation applies. Uh, that's a wind is a major, major one for producing this positive storm effect. Ambipolar diffusion is uh, play a secondary role, which is offset by the E cross B uh, transport. So in, so, so in that case, the, the formation mechanism should be different in the top side ionosphere and the bottom side ionosphere. So it's not like uh, just a one. Well, in this part, we talk about the uh, formation me mechanism. Since there is an offset between the magnetic pole and the geographic pole, it will expect there is some universal dependence of this time realization. Here's a result from standalone Tai GCM run. All, uh, all these uh, all these figures are the same. The only difference is that the, the UT difference in the storm commencement. Like this is UT four, UT eight, UT twelve, and the separation is four hours. We see the time realization is the strongest at the at the twenty UT. When the two cell convection is more located in the day side compared to this one, we see this con convection pattern almost in the case at the, at the, in the darkness. You know, uh, another thing is that we see that this source region is much stronger than this one. So that's why the time realization is stronger in at this 20 UT. Because there is a different, uh, the displacement between the geographic and, the geomag and the magnetic pole are different in the northern and the southern hemisphere. So it will expect that the southern hemisphere have different UT effects. 
we see the, this, uh, this one has the same layout as the previous one, but only for the southern hemisphere. We see the tonalization is strongest at this UT, even though the, the two cell convection almost in the darkness, we see the ter so uh, solar terminator is almost around here. But the source region is quite strong. Th and also very close to the convection pattern, we see a very strong tonalization at this uh, 16 UT. It's weakest uh, in, in the 4 UT. So the two cell convection are in the day side, but source is weak and uh, far from the convection. So it has less, uh, less plasma content to be transported into the polar cap. So in, the, in summary, for this uh, hemisphere dependence, in two things, one is the convection pattern, another, uh, another is a transportation, a plasma convection and the source in intensity. Here uh, show the 2D plot how about the 3D? Ionosphere is a 3D since we look, uh, we choose the storm event, uh, event that in 2015 sympatric storm. This is um, a greater storm that has a minimum symmetry index of about 234 Lalo Tesla. Here is animation uh, uh, illustrate the evolution of the uh, SCD plume. Uh, this starting from 16 UT to 24 UT. We see the SCD plume gradually diminish and uh, finally was, eat, eat, was eaten by the lactive storm effects. At this uh, lighting UT, the, the millstone here was located just underneath this SCD base. So we can use the inosound to look at the vertical information. This is an uh, inosound uh, from, uh, from millstone here. The top one is a uh, peak density. We see compared to the previous day, this quiet time reference, the NMF2 was decreased. Uh, HMF2 was increased compared to this the quiet time reference was increased by about 80 kilometers. And TEC was increased as well. The cosmic, uh, set, uh, cosmic uh, FM1 satellites just uh, fly across this SCD phenomena as well. The black one is a uh, quiet time reference. The the top side T the top side T C above cosmic satellite uh, increase from five T C U to quiet time five T C U to uh, for to fifteen T C unit. So the the plasma content above cosmic satellite was almost tripled. This indicates that the, the the um, electron density, uh, the TEC enhancement mainly comes from the top side, but not the, not the bottom side of the atmosphere. Here is the uh, incoherent scatter radar can, can f uh, give further evidence. The black one is also the quiet time electron density profile reference. The, this is red one is the storm time. We see the, the electron density was depleted in the bottom side, but increased in, in the top side. Because of depletion in the bottom side, it has less downward heat, heat conduction. So it traps the heat in the, in the top side of the atmosphere. That's uh, why the electron density got lots of enhancement in the top side. So uh, because of the electron temperature enhancement, the plasma scale height becomes larger. So this, pro this storm time becomes more steeper. This is, the, this is the summary of my second part. So in the third so, so region, upward E cross B, local upward E cross B um, are the most important process in producing this SED. After the upward lift, it will transport horizontally to the polar cap region. TOI occurs at the UT when the highly related convection is closer to the, to the mid latitude peak density. So more plasma can be directly uh, transported into the polar, polar region. So this unusual uh, 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 SED is the uh, SED in TEC, but not on MF2. The MF2 was decreased. In the last part, I will talk about the MMF effects on the polar atmosphere thermosphere coupling. Here we look at the same figures again. The, because the, both the, the field line currents um, and the convection are largely determined uh, by the, by the interplanetary magnetic field direction. So the, it will change the IT coupling, so it can further alter the, the neutral wind divergence, neutral divergence or convergence, that's the neutral composition. 
here is an example that, uh, per, uh, that uh, was performed by the Tom Emo 2006. They, this is the observation. This is time, G, time GCM uh, simulated uh, ONT ratio. And this is, a, uh, this, uh, this is also a time GCM simulation. But the driver, they just reverse uh, BY. This is uh, their time GCM difference between the reversed and the truth. We see that in the BY polarity do have some effects on the neutral composition. It produces depletion in this area, uh, fifteen percent depletion uh, in, in over loss marker and enhancement in the in the, in the polo in more, at a more higher altitude. But this study was um, was uh, was performed at a fixed BZ condition. There was no BZ variation almost. So this arises a question: Are the global structure of thermosphere composition uh, significantly different? Significantly different under different IMBZ and BY condition. How do the other parameters and what the process driving this response? This is a model that uh, uh, highlighted the potential. Um, highlighted poten uh, potential. The top one is the is a negative BY condition. We see the negative BY the dawn cell generally is stronger than the uh, than the dusk cell, and also the we see this uh, asymmetry is uh, is uh, is the largest uh, when the when the BY BY is stronger than the BZ, weakest in the BZ dominated case. As B as BY change from negative to positive condition, we see the um, the whole convection rotate clockwise from like this one, the rotate clockwise, and also the two cell convection become more twisted. We see it's not that the the anti sunward part is not that straight anymore. And uh, the dawn dusk uh, symmetry change ch change the relative intensity. We see a stronger in the dusk uh, cell. So because of the the changes in the in the ion convection, so it will affect the neutral wind through the ion frequent ion neutral collisions. Here is a neutral wind pattern. The uh, the background is a uh, neutral temperature. We see the neutral wind exit uh, f f generally from blow from the hottest to the coldest region, but it's modified by the ion drag. So it's flow in this direction. In the BY condition, the flow is uh, in the in flow towards the pre mid light. For the BY negative one, is the neutral wind becomes weaker. The equator uh, component becomes weaker and. Uh, and also prefers the post midnight sector. Because of the different di direction of the neutral wind, it will affect the neutral composition uh, disturbance. We see in the BY negative uh, case, the neutral composition disturbance, that uh, lower ONT ratio region, is more elongating in the latitude direction compared to the positive one. And uh, another interesting that uh, uh, neutral composition disturbance prefers uh, prefers the pre midnight for the negative BY and uh, prefers the, the post midnight. We see more negative pro uh, propagated towards the post midnight sector. This expand uh, expand our understanding that neutral composition always prefer the post midnight sector as as refuted by plus at all two thousand eleven. So, what's the cause for this uh, for this BY uh, effects on the neutral composition? So, we to uh, in order to understand, we did uh, some backward trajectory to understand it. We choose two uh, choose one point that have for BY and BZ. Like this one is label this location. We did a backward. Uh, I did a backward trajectory. They have the uh, same ending point. But the history, the blue one from in the originated from a higher latitude compared to the red one. That's it. And also, the blue one started from lower altitude. So that's you can explain why we see um, lower ONT ratio. So that's a summary of my second, uh, third part. In the north hemisphere, the BY chain from negative to positive, the whole ion convection and the winds and rotated clockwise. And the equator expansion of neutral composi composition prefers the pre midnight or post midnight for the negative and, uh, or positive BY condition. And the backward trajectory suggests that as the air parcel with lower ONT ratio comes from 
uh, lower altitudes. Here is a reference. These three uh, are related to the Fallibuman instability effects on the geospace system. And these three is related to the SCD or time valization stuff. I will stop here. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't quite catch that. Well, let's just talk about colors. Mm -hmm. The blue curve is lowest. Yep. This one. The blue curve is lowest. That's mm -hmm. the observation. Oh, but this one. Yeah. The green curve is baseline. Okay. It's it's closest to the blue curve. It's closer to the blue curve. Yeah. Than the case with Farley Buderman. Okay. This so Farley Buderman does does not seem to be helping. Uh, the comparison with observations for the field line current. That, that's one takeaway from this. Yeah. It seems like. Yeah. yeah. The, observation, the observation could be wrong. It's <laughs> <laughs> always possible. I mean, just because they're called observations doesn't mean they're true. Yeah, you, you, you know, the ampere is, has only several satellites that's over smooth the data. So, how reliable is <laughs> In the model currently, we only have conductance feedback channel, so no other things. So the, the Farley Buderman seems to be doing the right thing to the potential, right? In yeah. In fact, it's enhancing the conductivity, and therefore yeah. it should be pulling the potential down. Mm -hmm. But then that seems to produce a boost in the field line current, so. That's why. Is mm. what you would expect. Yeah. It's just that the observations are the thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I suspect it's the, the, the ampere current could be <laughs> could be not right at this very, very beginning part. This is a positive feedback. You have a lower conductivity, you have a more current, and then you, you generate more ionization in there, and uh, you decrease decrease your conductivity even more. Correct. You have higher conductivity, so you reduce the cross polar cap potential, but you have more field line currents. You have more free currents, you have more oral precipitation. Actually, that's, that's for quite a complicated issue. I, I think it may have to do with whether you should be treated as a current generator or voltage generator, or it could be both. I think it's neither current or low voltage generator. Right. When it's more yeah, it's more complicated. Yeah, actually, Dong Ning has a paper discussed the, the, the LTR simulation of the SAP structure. LTR simulation really do, uh, can capture SAP sub structure, even though Bill does not agree with that. It's, it's not SAP. <laughs> but, but yeah, we have SAP structure. Uh, in the LTR, we just uh, manually, first, we find the equatorial boundary of this electron precipitation. And uh, after finding that, we 
define that if the like uh, five degree within that five degree we we damp that uh, zero drift to remove the subs effects. Okay, thank you.